Matt Bauer explains how you can use your family history of blood clots to better understand your risk and presents testing and treatment choices for thrombophilia, blood clotting disorders. Learn how the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, GINA, protects you and your family. Find out when you should consider testing your children for clotting disorders and where you can get more information about genetics and clotting disorders. These are our genes and our stories. I work in genetic counseling. Genetic counseling, we work with a lot of different conditions. It's relatively unique. I think that I work with blood clotting disorders. Um, but if you go back and look at the history, the very foundations of medical genetics and genetic counseling, it actually goes back thousands of years. And you can actually find reference to the genetics of bleeding and clotting disorders in the Old Testament of the Bible. And in Jewish law, they recognize that if you circumcised a boy and that boy bled significantly or bled to death, that actually other males in that line and in the maternal line were exempt from circumcision. What this was, it was an, an implicit recognition of excellent inheritance of bleeding disorders. And so a little bit different from clotting, but in the same world, that bleeding and clotting disorders actually have one of the longest histories of recognized patterns of inheritance and, in a sense, genetic counseling, talking to people about risks based on what we know about their family. Um, skip ahead a few thousand years here, um, to the late 1800s, early 1900s, there's sort of a dark chapter or dark era in genetics and medical genetics. And the beginning of this was something called the eugenics movement in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And this was a movement that was very much founded by a gentleman named Francis Galton, who was a cousin of a guy named Charles Darwin. And what um, eugenics was about, it was trying to encourage societal change through good breeding, to use a bad term, but in a sense, trying to encourage people with good genetics to have kids, and trying, on a darker side, to discourage people with bad genetics not to have kids. And those two things are called positive and negative eugenics. We want to find the, the funny, wealthy, smart, happy people, and, and they should be having all these kids, but those other people, we don't want to be having kids. And this is the basis of a lot of things from the negative eugenics side, there were mandatory sterilization laws in the books in the United States until very, very recently for people who were insane, people who were criminals, people who were mentally retarded. Um, on the positive eugenic side, at the Minnesota State Fair, there were fit family displays of like, these are good genetic families. And so eugenics was very much a part of our society through the 1800s, early 1900s. And the goal really was noble, it was somewhat noble. It's a way of trying to eliminate poverty, suffering, disease from the human race by encouraging the accumulation of good genes. Where this got taken to an extreme, unfortunately, if, you, if we look back through the lens of 2008 at Nazi Germany, you can see where these ideas get taken to an extreme, to the point where entire races of people are exterminated, people are mentally retarded, people are insane. People were essentially exterminated based on perceived genetic differences that were perceived to be bad. And medical genetics really came into being immediately in the aftermath of World War II, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. And a lot of what guides medical genetics is in some sense a response to the excesses of eugenics and what happened in Nazi Germany. And I think there was a very big emphasis um, early on in the history of medical genetics on informed consent, making sure that patients are making their own decision, aware of all the facts, aware of all the options, and also non-directiveness, trying not to guide people towards what you perceive as the right answer. So you shouldn't have any more kids because we know that you're a carrier of this disease. Or you should get this test. You shouldn't do this. Instead, you're educating people about their genetics and allowing them to make their choice. That was called non-directiveness, this idea <clears throat> that we're really not there to tell people what to do with their genetic information. We're there to educate them about choices. And I think a lot of new technologies have sort of changed things over time. In the 1950s and 60s, there weren't a lot of genetic tests around. Um, since then, we've be become able to identify people who carry genetic conditions. We've been able to, to diagnose genetic conditions during pregnancy. We can do genetic tests that predict risk, that predict this person's going to get Huntington's in the future, or in you guys' case, predict a risk for blood clotting. 